My name is Alan Wake. I'm a writer. I remember playing Alan Wake for the first time back in 2010 on my Xbox 360 and I knew from the start that this game will not just be good, but great. Obviously, my hunch was right because 10 years later, Alan Wake is still one of the greatest gaming experiences I ever had. Now, in an essay in the intro section, you should summarize everything you're about to say in the rest of the essay. But that seems a bit too formulaic for this video, so yeah, let's let's just hit the intro, shall we? The title was made by a little game developer from Finland called Remedy Entertainment. If you've heard of them before, it's because the games that came out of their gates bear a heavy resonance for millions of players. Mainly because of this guy, Sam Lake, that you might recognize as being the face of one Payne Max from 2001. The legend goes that after Max Payne 2 was released in 2003, the team took a hiatus to find new ideas for future projects. Two years after that, in 2005, they showed a behind closed doors demo at E3 and afterwards, well, it kinda took them another five years to finally come out with Alan Wake. What I love most about this game is obviously the story, and among the many reasons I feel that way is a particular theme, the battle between light and darkness. As a side note, that's also one of the reasons I absolutely adore True Detective Season 1. Do you wonder ever you're a bad man? The world needs bad men. We keep the other bad men from the door. So, in this game, the theme is spread out under many forms, symbolisms, and metaphors. For example, the time the events are unfolding is divided into night and day. Also, the game shares its title with the name of the protagonist, which is a clever little hint at what is actually going on in the story. Because being awake is a completely different state of consciousness than when you're sleeping, or better suited to our case, when you're dreaming. We start off in a town called Night Springs. Apparently, everything that takes place in this dimension is a manifestation of Alan's nightmare, thus explaining the supernatural elements that occur. And in a fitting cheek and tongue manner, after that first incursion into the perilous night, of course you find out that it was all... Just another nightmare. Everything's fine. You dozed off. Right. The other part of the game takes place during the day in the fictional city of Bright Falls, an antithetic name to its nightmare counterpart. Fun little fact, the inspiration for Bright Falls was drawn from a famous 90s TV show called Twin Peaks. And you will see a lot of such references during the game and more that I will point out as we go on. Another aspect I love about these types of games is the audio narration of the main character that expresses his emotions during various moments. I was close now. I had to get there fast. I dreaded what I would find. The reason I enjoy them so much is because they carry along a factor of immersion that greatly intensifies my experience. Mainly because, as a player, I am always aware of the main character's emotional turmoil and I can empathize with him. Now, it goes without saying that this technique has to be done properly in a video game, because otherwise, well, you get rudimentary monologues with no emotional connection whatsoever to the main character or the plot, like I came across in Vampire. Mary, I'm sorry. Whoever did this to us, I will find them. I don't care. I, I, I don't care. Now back to our story, what I like about this first contact that takes place during the day is that the town, well, the diner more exactly, feels lived in. Its NPCs aren't just there to take up space, they're alive and add to the suspension of disbelief. 
For example, the officer that interacts with you as well as the lovable Anderson brothers. Also, let's not forget about this elderly woman that we find out later she carries a significant role during the story. We see her standing in a contorted defensive position, holding a gas lantern and flipping a switch on and off. Clearly, she is afraid of the dark and the game wants us to see that. Also, she is a nod to this little lady right here from Twin Peaks. My name is Margaret Lanterman. I am known as the Log Lady. So, after that scene, I was left with one question. If everything bad happens during his nightmares only, but this lady is afraid of the dark during the day, then something must have bridged through and somehow made its effects shown in the real world as well. Narratively speaking, what this does to your mind is make it curious and that alone draws you into the story by creating mystery and making you think. Another way in which immersion is achieved is through the radio shows you can tune into and hear what the locals have to say surrounding the recent bizarre phenomenons. And the way in which these short radio interviews are carried out make everything that's going on relevant and believable. It sounds serious, Pat. I'm telling you, it don't sound like no party. I also admire how immersion is achieved through the pages of the manuscript you find along the way. The catch behind it is that they aren't filled with lore like in Skyrim and they aren't about unrelated tales of long, long ago, but they are tiny windows into the future. The attack had been vicious. Max whined in his cage. Rusty's eyes were wild with fear and terror. He gasped. Mr. Wake, it happened just the way it was on that page. It happened just the way it was on that page. I found Game True. It knew. Also, sometimes they explain in detail what already happened. The chopper bucked wildly and the board lit up, telling her what she already knew. They were going down. In normal circumstances, letting the player know plot points before they happen would usually ruin the experience. Interestingly enough, that doesn't happen here at all. I actually looked forward to finding every single page and when I couldn't, I was annoyed because I was missing out on the story contained within. Also, the game doesn't reveal every little thing that's going to happen and the pages are part of a separate timeline making perfect sense on their own. Because after you reach a certain point in the story and you find out that Alan has been missing a week with no recollection of past events and you also discover that he wrote all of those pages, then everything starts falling into place. Departure by Alan Wake what I'm getting at is that this game not only makes you want to play it, but it also deepens the mystery every step of the way and makes it tangible right from the start. This is how you build immersion, how you write a good story, how you make a great narrative in a video game. Another thing I love about Alan Wake is the way in which it played with my perception, or better said, with my mind. In the game, you come across a channel on TV where you see Alan thinking out loud and saying things like, Alice's life is at stake, but I can't think about that or I'll lose it. Anything is possible here. I'll write the story. I'll save her. My initial impression was that what happened on television took place in an alternate reality. But after I heard this line, The genre of the story seems to be shifting. It's turning into a horror story. I'm getting close. I can feel it. I started to wonder if I wasn't actually playing his character inside the manuscript he was talking about on TV. Are you telling me I'm not real? Anything else in this place? So there are two of me? Yes. Basically, by this point, I was like, My brain hurts! <laughs> But it wasn't the end of it, because later in the game, my conspiracy theory got set ablaze by this line alone. I felt like this was happening to someone else. Someone else was watching the television. And if that wasn't enough, my theory kind of got proven later on when I heard this. I've written myself into the story. I'm now the protagonist. It was all kind of wrapped in this Inception effect blanket, where you have the writer writing about himself, but what you've been playing so far happened only inside his story and not in his reality. In other words, My, my, the plot like my gravy thicken. <laughs> the story is a bit complex, but not in a bad way. It also has fleshed out characters that you start to care about, like the Anderson brothers. At the same time and at the opposite spectrum, there are some instances where you actually loathe some people like the douchebag shrink. <sighs> I never get tired of this view. 
These characters are awesome to discover and learn about, but one of my favorite ones lies within another story, and he is Thomas Zane. The events that happen to Zane are actually mirrored in Alan Wake's story, and it all makes perfect sense. Zane writes about himself, his girlfriend being taken over by a dark presence. <laughs> After the entire story was unfolded before my eyes, I was honestly left there wondering, where do you come up with this stuff? Complex and twisted narrative plots like this just put Alan Wake head and shoulders above many other games when it comes to storytelling. Sometimes you have no idea what's going on, but you are always surprised that new juicy information is being given to you at a regular pace, so you will always be on the edge of your seat. Just thinking about my experience with the game makes me want to see a full-blown remake with next-gen graphics and a sequel. I mean, I know Remedy doesn't really do sequels, but come on guys, do it for the sake of the craft and for the passionate hundreds of thousands of people that love Alan Wake. Now I want to focus on another reason I love the game, and that is the sheer volume and execution of horror culture references. On the road to the cabin, you start seeing crows along the way. Now, you might think of Hitchcock and you'd be partially right, but then you reach a sign called Bird Leg Cabin. And when you dig deep enough and hear these characters say, Baba Yaga got to him too, the damn witch. We are, of course, talking about Slavic mythology. Now, if you're not up to date with your Slavic folklore, Baba Yaga is a witch of the woods that lives in a hut described as having chicken legs. Not her, the hut. And if that wasn't enough, the name of the lake the cabin is on is called... Cauldron Lake. There's no island on Cauldron Lake. Another cool reference is that of the popular TV show created in 1959, The Twilight Zone. In Alan Wake, its counterpart is appropriately named Night Springs. The catch is that the developers actually took time and made a fake show that lasts for a couple of minutes, and they're not bad either. I really admire how the game doesn't shy away from the sources of its inspiration, but it even embraces them. Stephen King once wrote that nightmares exist outside of logic, and there's little fun to be had in explanations. They're antithetical to the poetry of fear and it continues to pay homage to his sources throughout the entire game. As a teenager, just starting to get interested in writing, Stephen King had been a source of inspiration to me. The fights with the bulldozer boss or the giant combine were themselves a reference to another one of Stephen King's books, Christine, that also got a movie adaptation. It's about a car that gets possessed. And if you're fans of Futurama, you might remember the scene where Bender turns into a work car. Another reference I love from this game comes in the form of... And on the off chance you somehow didn't catch that, here's another example that might jog your memory. And if like these weren't enough, one of my favorite scenes from the entire game was part of a later released DLC Special Features 2. Of course, that's mirroring this famous scene from the movie 2001 A Space Odyssey. This is also one of my favorite parts of the game because it represents the inner struggle Story Alan was facing when writer Alan went insane and was metaphorically fighting his own insanity. See how deep this game can go down the rabbit hole? Complementing this allegory is the physical manifestation of Night Springs that gets contorted and misshapen like a mirroring of Wake's inner battle. To me at least, this level of creativity isn't something you run across in your everyday video game. I absolutely love the fact that it's a visual feast, but at the same time, it serves the story as well. The guys and gals at Remedy Games shaped the world according to the story and didn't just randomly stop at this creative decision just for the sake of it. In all honesty now, as a big pop culture nerd like myself growing up during the 90s, how could I not absolutely adore the buttload of references this game is full of? Now, you take that, intertwined with the story elements, and you have yourself one of the best stories ever told through a video game. Now, I know the final story ends with... My name is Alan Wake, and I'm a writer. And all that tells us is that there should be an Alan Wake 2, but sadly more than a decade has gone by with no such luck. 
There was a working prototype at some point, but for better or for worse, that got scrapped. But good news may be on the horizon, because in an article by PC Gamer dated July 23rd, 2019, Sam Lake, the writer of the game, said that I want to make it, it's a curious thing. At this point, so much time has passed. I feel that the bar is higher in some ways. It needs to be done right if it's ever done. Everything needs to click into place, which is really hard to make it happen. So many things for these big games to be greenlit need to be aligned. But I'm hoping that someday it can be made. And as the Sisters of Fate would have it, that day might actually come because as of July 1st, 2019, Remedy got the publishing rights back for Alan Wake from Microsoft and, well, I guess we'll just have to wait and see what the future holds. All I know and feel is that there should definitely be another Alan Wake. There's a long journey through the night back into the light. Hey, thanks for watching. Well, that's if you've gotten this far, I mean. If you liked this video, it will help us out a lot if you click the like button and or leave a comment, cause YouTube loves to promote channels with a lot of buzz going on. And of course, subscribe and click the bell icon if you don't want to miss out on any of our videos. Also, if you really like us, please consider supporting our passion on Patreon. Of course, it's totally cool if you don't or can't, but you'd be missing out on early access to our videos or exclusive videos like this one right here, where I go in depth behind the edit and talk about how we make our videos. We're also thinking of adding new benefits all the time, it'll just take a while because we're just starting out and because sadly we're not doing this full time. The goal is to get there someday and lord willing that will be sooner rather than later. Thanks again and stay safe.